Hello, so uh, my name is Matthew Upson. I am a data scientist, whatever that means. Um, and I, I'm going to talk about culture change, and I'm not going to talk too much about who I am, where I am, because it will become uh, apparent. But I am one of the 2017 2018 fellows, which is very cool. Um, so the subject of this talk is well, <laughs> I started out by wanting to call this affecting culture change in a large, large organisation. And the large organisation that I'm talking about really is the UK government. So I used to work as a uh, data scientist in the Government Digital Service, which is an organisation right at the heart of government, which uh, has a remit around a whole load of stuff, which I'm not going to bore you with right now, so I don't have time. Um, but essentially, um, that's what I'm going to talk about now. I'm going to talk about building sustainable software in the UK government. And hopefully somebody's standing up and shouting, thinking in their head, maybe not shouting, that government already has a whole load of sustainable software. Um, and that's because government digital services have done a really good job. And over the last five years, they have produced a whole load of software to do a whole load of different things for government, like hosting the government's website and various other things. And probably services which you've interacted in with yourselves for paying tax and whatnot have been built in a sustainable way. And that's done by professional uh, software developers who um, publish a lot of their code online. There's 800 odd repositories here. Um, there's a community of 300 odd uh, developers who are um, maintaining and uh, producing that code. So that's a success. That's great news. Um, and also, we also have this thing called the Digital Service Standard where we uh, force and uh, suggest that any new code produced in government should be made openly and follow some you know, sensible principles for making it sustainable going forward. However, uh, not only developers write code in government, uh, there's also a whole range of other um, job roles. Uh, and this is where kind of government starts to look a bit more like academia. So, and often people who, who uh, occupy these roles as economists or statisticians or whatever they are, uh, they often have a background in, uh, in academia and they would have done you know, mass degrees or whatever it happens to be to, to support their job role. And these people look a lot more like um, researchers and, and students who write code probably on a daily basis but probably don't think of themselves as. Uh, uh, as developers, and they don't think that they are writing software. So they're, they're kind of not aware of the ecosystem of um, tools and techniques that are available to make their software more reproducible and more sustainable. And so for the focus of this talk, I'm really talking about um, statisticians and the work that they do. So in government, there are something like uh, 4,000 odd analysts, uh, percentage of those, quite a large percentage of those are statisticians. Um, and on Gov.uk, which I hope many of you will have interacted with, um, we publish a lot of statistics. <coughs> so at present, there are about 16,000 statistical publications there. A statistical publication is comparable, I suppose, to a master's thesis. You know, it's kind of, it's got some um, data in it, it's got some visualizations in it, it's got tables in it. It, it will have had several people working on it for a number of weeks, possibly months, to produce it and publish it online. And these things are published on a weekly basis, well, maybe not weekly, but monthly, six monthly, annual basis, so they're very regularly published, which means that the, the problem of um, sustainability and reproducibility is kind of a lot more acute than for a journal article, which is only going to get published once. Um, and this isn't particularly clear, unfortunately, this arrow, but this is a highly idealized situation. The, the workflow for a lot of these uh, publications is uh, uses a whole range of proprietary software. Um, and it's much more complicated than this linear process that I've suggested. I don't really want to spend too much time talking about uh, how bad like, workflows look, because I'm sure you're all aware of what a bad workflow would look like. Um, but I guess the point is that a lot of these workflows are quite poor, uh, and they incorporate a lot of manual or semi-manual processes, which are impossible or difficult at best to reproduce. And that's a real problem, because um, it's not the case that you produce bad numbers and then um, you have to retract it when someone notices there's an error in your, uh, in your publication. It's like, you know, someone produces some really bad statistics, government makes a decision on it, and it affects us all in one way or another. So it's super important that these numbers are right, and it's, a, uh, it's something that's not lost on the people who are, who are working on it. Um, anyway, so rewind to well, 100, uh, 18 months or so. Um, I joined government and I'd been interested in sustainable software when I worked in um, academia. Um, and seeing these kind of uh, pipelines of, of uh, production in government, I thought, well, you know, can't we do something about this and make it better? So 
Um, we kind of want to use concept of reduced oil and some pipelines. Um, this is a good lesson in why naming things is important, and you should think about it more than I did. Uh, but I just thought the acronym RAP was quite good, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, so we, we go with this idea, I mean, essentially this is just reproducible reporting, right? So it's taking, um, it's abstracting code away, it's using version control, it's continuous integration, stuff like that, like the usual fare. And I basically did a project, and uh, the two things I really want you to take away from this slide, neither of which you'll be able to read. Um, the first one is, this was published in March 2017. And I actually forgot what the other thing was, so we'll just say one thing. And so that's great. So we, I, I've done some work, I produced a prototype, and I published it in March 2017. In December 2017, this blog was published. Um, this was about me, this is by a guy called Ed Hunkerson, who is the Director General of the Office for Statistical Regulation. So from March to December, we've gone from the point of this being a crazy idea that, that I kind of was pushing to something that's actually being accepted by quite a large proportion of government and is being pushed by uh, this guy who is the head of the Office of Statistical Regulation, the body that uh, is tasked with ensuring that uh, government produces quality statistics. So I, I guess that's kind of quite a success and it was quite a surprise that we got that far so quickly. Um, so I guess the rest of this talk really is about um, talking about some of the lessons we've learned in going from an idea to acceptance in quite a large community, in quite an entrenched old school community, uh, and how those ideas might be useful for you. And I've got like three and a half minutes, so I'm going to put five points, so I'll dash through them. The five lessons we learned. So number one, the first thing we did was to build a prototype. Because well, I could talk about all of these ideas until the cows come home, but until I actually had a chance to build it and quantify some of the benefits, for example, um, a figure that we came up with, a figure that I, not I, but a figure that one of the senior statisticians came up with, was that these techniques saved about 75% of the time we, uh, it was usually taken to produce this publication. So we worked with the Department of Cultural Media and Sport, we uh, automated all of their processes, we made a really nice pipeline, you can go and see it, it's on GitHub. Um, I'll show the link momentarily. So, I guess my first thing is build a prototype because it's very difficult for people to visualize these things if it doesn't actually exist yet. Uh, and, and there it is. Uh, this sits on, on GitHub at the moment. It's still being actively um, developed by statisticians or data scientists in DCMS. Um, and that's the thing now, which is great. So, the next thing is so I talked about this so much that I got so bored of it. Uh, and that, I think, is really important. So, as soon as you've got something, go and talk about it a whole load. And basically, this is between uh, that first blog post in uh, March and this later blog post coming out in December, we did a whole load of presentations. So, we uh, did video demonstrations, we presented a whole load of conferences, we produced a Git book, we since produced a MOOC. Uh, and basically, we saturate people so that they, you know, everywhere they go, they're hearing about this terrible name reproducible and it's called pipeline. They can't get away from it. So I'm running out of time, so I'm going to skip through really quick. But a really key point, and I know this was mentioned before by Kirsty, is um, be nice to people. So it's very easy to beat people uh, around the head with the idea that you should be using continuous integration or, or um, uh, version control or whatever. But actually, that doesn't, doesn't really get you very far. And what you really want to do is find people who are as excited as you are who want to join you from other organizations. Because, uh, I was working centrally with the government and I was trying to go out to other organisations and say, hey, you should do this thing too. And that's really impossible without uh, making friends and getting champions within other departments. Uh, and that was completely integral to, to our approach. Number four is you can't do this just from the bottom up. So you can't just train people up and say, okay, this is how to do it and you crack on. You also need to have a bit of a top-down approach to convince the people at the top to make space for people to do this. At least this is how it was in government. And I guess my main question here is, um, I think you should ask yourself, what keeps people up at night? What keeps the senior leaders who hold all the keys to the budget and whatever, what keeps them up at night? Because it's probably not the fact that you find this job quite boring and demeaning, copying and pasting code or copying and pasting numbers from one table to another. They're probably much more concerned about whether there could be embarrassing errors or whether or not you, they can stand up and say that my department, my organisation is a thought leader in this field. And pretty much as soon as we kind of come onto that and we were tailoring our messages to the right people, it actually really helped us kind of move things along. And my final point, just as, just as my 10 minutes kind of uh, rolls over, um, is something that we didn't learn while we were going through, but I've since sort of come to this uh, appreciation, 
So we concentrated really, really hard on the idea that we, these things should be re reproducible. And I think the name belies that, reproducible and the pipeline. And actually what we missed is the sustainability element. And in government at least, in these departments, sustainability comes from people. It doesn't come from a technical solution. It comes from recruiting the right people and recognising that you need to have the right people with the right skills in place to actually take these developments on forward. Because it's unlikely we're going to develop like a big open source community who are going to help us develop government statistics. You know, it's going to have to be an internal thing. We need to make sure we have those people in place. And so now, now that I've left government, I should have said that, I have left government, um, looking back inwards, now this is my question. Is government going to uh, get on top of this and, and make these things sustainable, not just be useful? We will see. Uh, and finally, just you know, good luck in all your ventures because it's, uh, it's a hard challenge getting uh, um, communities to change the way they work. <laughs>